Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and it's time for part two of the Q&A, so let's go ahead and get this started. All right, first question. Any thoughts on cholesterol sensitivity variation in humans? It seems that some people are over-absorbers versus some who can tolerate higher amounts. Uh, people misunderstand this data. They misunderstand it. They're not reading it closely. They're not looking at what the experts are saying. Okay, the over-absorbers still don't have a problem. And here's the thing, every time I bring up the types of fats that negatively impact lipid profiles, you get people who jump up and say, dietary cholesterol doesn't affect, okay. No one's talking about dietary cholesterol when we talk about fat type. They're not the same thing. So, what are we seeing with this? 60% of the human population determined completely by genetics do not really absorb dietary cholesterol to any significant degree, enough to be concerned about, 60%. 40% are over absorbers. It is genetic, you have no control over it, you were born that way. That's it, if you don't like it, pick better parents. Now, these people see an elevation in the type of LDL that isn't necessarily associated with heart disease. So dietary cholesterol is not considered at this point based upon the data to be a concern for heart disease cardiovascular disease what does well outside of being obese having too much fat now people say what about too much muscle no too much muscle doesn't contribute to heart disease in this regard it can cause some other issues it's not heart disease so we mean body fat the foods that impact your blood lipids in a way that hurt this are saturated fat and I want to note that, again, there's safe intakes. It's not saying all saturated fat is bad. I eat saturated fat every day. All right? I don't eat an excess of it. I mean, I eat red meat almost every day. However, I go with leaner cuts, problem solved. Saturated fat, and it's not just animal source. The source isn't as important. This can affect your lipid profile in a way it's harmful. So all these vegans who say, oh, well, I get plant source saturated fat. Well, yeah, you're, you're doing the same thing you're saying is going to kill the meat eaters. And if you're eating too much of it, you're at the exact same risk because the animal versus plant source is completely irrelevant. It doesn't matter in this case. Uh, excessive refined carbohydrates, particularly, again, fructose, refined fructose negatively affect blood health markers in a way that risk cardiovascular disease. Those are your concerns. In other words, guys, too much saturated fat and or too much refined sugars. Not dietary cholesterol. It's not even necessarily carbs. It's not even necessarily fat. But it's all contextual based upon the rest of your lifestyle. This is, this is your concerns. All right, next question. What's your opinion on Charles Poliquin saying that split routines are superior compared to full body routines because most top bodybuilders and most Mr. Olympia winners use split routines? That's what he said, at least. I am unaware of him saying this. However, if the late Charles Poliquin, who actually was a very good coach himself, he was a good coach, right? You're not going to try to take that away from him. Hopefully none of you are going to try to take that away from him because you really can't, but he's passed. Um... Assuming he said that, that's bad logic. But here's the thing, guys. When we start talking split routines, I support split routines. I don't promote body part splits, but I do upper lowers. All my training, all my clients, all do upper lower. I have free full body programs for novice lifters. Years ago, I stopped supporting the idea for non-novices doing full body. I don't think it's ideal. Uh, I think some splitting is necessary, right? Whether you want to split it based upon an exercise, a movement pattern, and then accessories for it, or you want to go to upper lower, right? Which is what I actually do a combination of the two. What I do these days when I'm not doing conjugate. That is the way to go. That's the way the top strength athletes all train. It's the way I train my people who are drug-free. It's the way I train my people who are on drugs. That works. But if we're talking split routines, again, that's, that's a loaded question. That's like asking, like, the only difference is a split versus full body. 
Um, I, I don't think that's really the case because some people, when they're thinking of splits, they're thinking of bro splits, arm day, chest day. Yeah, and a lot of top bodybuilders train that way, but they also use a ridiculous, absurd amounts of drugs. Different rules apply. But can a drug-free person make good gains doing that? Sure, I just don't think it's ideal. They can still make good gains. As long as it's the volume and workloads and recovery is there. Uh, but I don't think saying because the Mr. Olympia winners did that, that that's the best way for everybody to train. Uh, I don't think that's necessarily guaranteed to be good logic for, you know, again, a, a host of reasons. But do I think that some splitting is optimal once you're out of the rank novice phase? Yes, absolutely. At least upper lower, right? At least upper lower. You're just not going to see me support true body part splits, right? And maybe that's what he was referring to. I don't know because I didn't I didn't see the full context in which he supposedly said it. And he's dead, guys. It probably doesn't even matter. Move on. All right, next question and last question of the week. Hey Jason, I am six foot four, two hundred and sixty-five pounds. I've been training for approximately five years now. I was wondering what's a good target weight would be for someone my height. I'm sitting at around twenty percent body fat now. Uh, I don't mind not having visible abs, but I do not want to take my health into consideration thanks in advance greetings from the netherlands i've had dutch clients you guys are all tall as hell so uh six four here's what i'm gonna say if health is a concern 265 is probably pushing it you need to be heavier like I, i'm gonna be honest it's six foot four you're not gonna be big or strong anything less than 220 pounds which for you would be 100 kg that's your minimum now, if you fill out your frame completely at 6'4", 220 is going to be real lean with visible abs. Um, if you don't care about abs so much, I'd lean in the direction of 240, maybe 250, right? In that 110 kg range. And, that, and that's where you want to be. I would say 265. If, if you're five years training drug-free, you might be above 20% at 265 at that height. You, you probably are, but that's okay. I mean, you're just estimating. Uh, it's an estimate. I would say you probably are, for, for health purposes, a little heavier than you really want to be. I would go ahead and take about 20 pounds off. Right, Trim down 20 pounds, maybe 30, and then slow bolt back up a little bit. Right, But your minimum, you don't want to go under about 220. 220 if you reach your, your full size potential, it's gonna be really, really, really lean. It's probably gonna be 10% body fat or less at that height. If you get up to that, that 24 plus fat free mass index, well, you could run it in a calculator and see. But you know, if you don't mind being up in the teens, 15%, 16, 17% body fat, which is perfectly healthy, yeah, you can be 240. You can be 245, no problem. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.